Welcome to Vertigo. In today's episode, we are going to explore the unsolved death of Canadian real estate agent Lindsay Buziak. In 2008, she was brutally murdered while showing a house to an unknown couple posing as prospective clients. Who had a motive to kill this young woman? And why does her murder remain unsolved to this day? So sit back, turn off the lights, and let's examine a case that has baffled Canadian authorities for years. Lindsay Buziak, born November 2nd, 1983, was a 24-year-old up-and-coming real estate agent selling houses in Victoria, British Columbia. As she was starting her career, she met her current boyfriend, Jason Zalo, and they were living together in a waterfront property at the time of her death. In late January of 2008, Buziak received a call out of the blue from a woman who said she and her husband were looking to buy a new house as soon as possible with a budget of $1 million. It's been reported that the caller had a foreign accent and used a fake name. Buziak was unnerved by the call which was made to her personal cell phone and asked the woman how she had gotten her number. The caller stated that a previous client of Buziak's had passed along her information. Buziak told her boyfriend Zalo about the call and mentioned she had concerns about its legitimacy. Zalo encouraged her to take on the client because the commission would be significant and he told Buziak he would accompany her to the property and wait outside in his car in case anything went wrong. Buziak made an appointment to show a property to her supposed new client on February 2nd, 2008. On the day of the house showing, Buziak and Zalo were together at a restaurant and left in separate vehicles around 4.30 p.m. Zalo headed to an auto shop where he picked up a colleague while Buziak went home to change her clothes. Zalo was apparently running late and CCTV shows him leaving the auto shop at approximately 5.30 p.m. Text messages were exchanged by the couple and Lindsay was aware that he was running late. The house was located in a small cul-de-sac containing three other houses. It stood at the outer end of the cul-de-sac on the intersection of D'Souza Place and a main through fair, Torquay Drive. The side of the property and the fence of the back garden ran parallel to Torquay Drive. Although the woman on the phone said that only she would be attending the viewing, it was actually a couple that showed up and met with Buziak. Two witnesses saw a six foot tall Caucasian man with dark hair and a blonde woman aged between 35 and 45 wearing a distinctly patterned dress walking up to the house. The witnesses stated they saw the couple shake hands with Lindsay and then the three of them entered the house together. Zalo arrived around 5.40 p.m., 10 minutes after Lindsay had entered the house, and claims he was able to see a figure through the glass of the front door. Zalo stated that he didn't want to be a nosy interfering boyfriend and decided to park on Torquay Drive instead of in front of the house. Once parked, he texted Buziak to ask her if she was okay. She never read this message. After 20 minutes had passed since Zalo had arrived and had last heard from Buziak, he went to the front door and found it locked when he tried to open it. Through the glass on the front door, he saw Lindsay's shoes in the entrance hall, but there was no sign of movement and no one answered his repeated knocks at the front door. At this point, he called 911. While Zalo was on the line with the operator, the colleague who had come with him from the auto shop found a gap in the fence in the back garden, entered the garden, and saw that the back patio door was wide open. He called out to Zalo, who told the operator that they were going into the house. Zalo then hung up. Zalo's colleague came through the main level of the home to unlock the front door to let Zalo in. Zalo immediately ran upstairs and found Buziak lying in a pool of blood in the master bedroom. Zalo called 911 a second time. Lindsay Buziak was pronounced dead when the paramedics arrived. She had been stabbed over 40 times in the head and chest. There were no defensive wounds, indicating that she had probably been initially stabbed from behind and had no inkling of what was about to happen. 
None of Buziak's possessions had been stolen and she had not been sexually assaulted. She was 24 years old. Zalo and his colleague were immediately considered suspects and taken into custody. However, they were released without charge as soon as their version of events was verified and supported by CCTV footage. They could not have committed the murder themselves. Furthermore, Zalo has been interviewed several times and has fully cooperated with the police and the investigation. He also passed a polygraph test. Detectives on the case are under the assumption that the murder was well organized and carried out by people who had murdered before, as there was a complete lack of DNA, fingerprints, or any physical evidence at the scene. They believe that Buziak was killed immediately upstairs and they were attempting to leave by the front door when Zalo drove up and he saw them in the window. They then fled through the back door, leaving the patio door open and left in a vehicle presumably parked on Torquay Drive. This would be consistent with the witness statements of the unknown couple walking and not driving up the cul-de-sac. All the vehicles in the cul-de-sac were accounted for when the police arrived on scene. The cell phone used by the unknown woman to call Buziak was purchased in Vancouver several months before the murder and had never been used until that call was made. It was activated under the name of Paulo Rodriguez, which authorities believe is a fake name. The phone was deactivated soon after the murder and has not been used since. Police believe the phone was used for the sole purpose of the murder and was discarded afterwards. This supports their theory that the murder was planned. Several theories have emerged as to why Lindsay was killed. A few weeks prior to Lindsay's death, a friend of hers was arrested for being a major participant in an illegal drug trafficking operation. It was speculated that perhaps Buziak was an informant and her death was connected to the drug bust. Police, however, have dismissed this theory as the murder was too brutal and not consistent with contract murders by drug cartels. Later, in 2008, a close friend of Buziak's named Nikki claimed that she was awakened by a telephone call in the middle of the night from an unknown number. As she was half asleep, she did not register much of what the female caller was saying, but she noticed that the caller had a strange accent that she could not place. She became scared when she remembered that Buziak had reported that her unidentified client had an odd accent that she could not put her finger on, and which she thought may have been fake. Now, fully alert, she called the number back, but no one picked up. She called repeatedly until someone answered. The person on the other end of the line was Shirley Zalo, the mother of Jason Zalo. Nikki asked Shirley why she called her and how she had her number, as they did not know each other. Shirley replied that she meant to call another Nikki, her secretary, and that she did not know why this number was even in her contact list. Shirley Zalo categorically denies that this event occurred, and it has not been publicly revealed whether Nikki's claim was followed up by the authorities. Due to the complete lack of evidence and no known motive, there is very little for authorities to go on in solving this case. Why would someone put out a hired hit on a young 24-year-old woman just starting her career? Was Jason Zalo involved? And if so, why? There does not appear to be any kind of motive, monetary or otherwise. Police remain hopeful that advances in DNA technology may one day provide an answer to this awful and brutal murder. Let me know what you think in the comments below and how you would go about further investigating this case. Please like and subscribe as you depart, and thank you for watching. Until next time, good night.